Join us for a look at The Rise of Titans expansion for Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria, an expansion featuring four new modules. Now, before we dive into the expansion, just in case you don't know the base game, be sure to check out our Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria review on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com, on YouTube, or as part of episode 196 of the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, Endgame. We also should note that we received a copy of this expansion along with the base game as thanks for the preview we did for the original Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria Kickstarter. So Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria Rise of Titans was designed by Stan Kordonsky, who is the designer of the original game and features the awesome artwork of the Miko, which blends in perfectly with the artwork of the original game. This was published in 2021 as part of the original Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria Kickstarter, but is now available in retail as a separate product. This expansion does not affect the player count of the original, which stays solo to five players, but does make the game a bit longer as the new modules add more decision points and more weight to the game, which can increase player thinking time. This expansion has an MSRP of $25, a reasonable price for what you get in the box. So Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria Rise of Titans presents four expansion modules that can be added to your games of Shadow Kingdoms. There's the Shrine of Titans, where your most powerful troops are resurrected and can be purchased with gold. The Great Battles, where troops from all factions battle together to defeat the Valerian forces. Ancient Spells, which add some new abilities and asymmetry to the game. And Wraith Dice, spectral forces that can be used in any battle, but don't take up room in your army. See everything you get in this expansion in our Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria unboxing video on YouTube. In this video, Mo unboxed everything that came with the Kickstarter, including Rise of Titans. Jump to about 14 minutes in to get to this expansion. So Shadow Kingdoms of Leia Rise of Titans comes in a much smaller box than the original box, which this, I really dig, is small enough to actually fit in the original box, which is a great way to keep the expansion content separated from the core game, should you choose to do so. In that box, you get a very clear set of rules, a set of five purple Wraith dice, two additional dice in each color from the core game, a punch board with hexagonal tokens in all the player colors, a deck of ancient spells, a deck of oversized cards featuring the great battles, and a two-sided Shrine of the Titans tile. Now the component quality here is excellent with card and cardboard quality totally matching the base game so they don't stick out in any way. Now I was particularly impressed by how well the Shrine of Titans lines up with the artwork on the base game board. It just looks like it's meant to be there. Now, the only real complaint I could see anyone having with this physically is despite the box being smaller than the base game, it still has a lot of air. Now, I'm sure this was done for shelf presence, but this could have been in a much smaller box than it was. Well, let's move on to giving an overview of how each of these new expansions works and what they add to Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. So the first module is the Shrine of Titans. This module gives you a new shrine, which is a worker placement spot that is represented by a two-sided tile that gets placed in the center of the board. This becomes a new spot you can send your warden to. Now, unlike the other shrines, no dice are added to the Shrine of the Titans at the beginning of the game or when reseeding the board mid-game. Dice are added to the Shrine of the Titans every time a player completes a battle. Mm -hmm. After each fight, the highest numbered die, instead of being tossed back into the bag, is placed on the Shrine of the Titans. When moving your Warden to this Shrine, you can purchase one, two, or three of the dice there. Now the Shrine of Titans is two-sided, presenting two different power levels for you to choose from. The difference here is the gold cost, which is lower on one side. With this, your group can decide how much of an impact they want this Shrine to make on their game. Next up are the Great Battles. This is a new deck of oversized cards for the game. You're going to draw two of these at the start of the game, and a new one is drawn whenever a great battle is completed. Now, each of these cards lists two army types, and then it has five spots to place troop dice. Similar to the Shrine of the Titans, this module has you do something with your dice after battle. In this case, though, it's your lowest die of the appropriate troop type that is sent to the battle of your choice. That is, if you have any of the applicable mm -hmm. troop types. Each troop you send will get you an instant reward, and you get to place a new hexagonal token in your faction color onto the battle card for when it is full. Now, once a great battle card is full of dice, the battle happens in its course. 
you're going to total up the strength of all the dice from all the players on the card and reference a scoring card to see how many points each player who took part gets. Now, this score is actually multiplied by the number of tokens and then dice each player contributed. The scoring card for the Great Battles is two-sided. One side takes more strength to score points than the other, so your group can modify how much impact this expansion will have on your games. Next, we have the Ancient Spells. The start of the game, each player is dealt three ancient spell cards. Each of these lists two of eight different spells on it. At any point during a player's turn, they can play a spell by discarding the card and picking one of the two spells on it to take effect. These spells feature a range of effects, including increasing the strength of your troops, gaining gold and magic for re-rolling one of your troops, getting gold for discarding an instant action champion, creating gems for gold and magic, and more. Now, the final module in Rise of the Titans for Shadow Kings of Valeria is the Wraith Dice. This set of five new purple dice are tossed into the bag at the beginning of the game. They come out onto the board just like the other dice, either at the beginning or while restocking the board. Unlike the normal dice, these dice don't have a troop type. Instead, they are counted as wild and can be used for any type. Mm -hmm. Wraiths, also being incorporeal, don't take up a slot on your board when drafted, but they are hard to control, so you can only have one wraith die at a time. Now, the disadvantage of these wraiths is that they aren't very strong. These dice only feature values ranging from one to three. While this hurts during battle, it does make them good for drafting for discounts. So now that you know what the four modules in Rise of Titans are, and you have a good idea of how to include them in your games, Let's dive into our thoughts on each of them. So we found each module to be interesting, and all of them gave you something new to consider while playing Shadow Kings of Laria without really changing the feel of the game. We enjoyed each of the modules and didn't find any we would never use, which is a good thing. That being said, the impact they had and the value they add to the game is certainly debatable and not consistent across mm -hmm. all four modules. Now, for me, at this point, if I'm the one setting up the game, there are two of these modules I would use every time. One I may or may not toss in, and one I would probably leave in the box. As just said, though, if someone wanted to use the force module, I wouldn't say no. It's not terrible. I just probably wouldn't use it in most of the games I set up. They aren't bad. You just have to weigh their benefit against the additional time and complexity added to the game to see if, for your group, each one will be a keeper or not. Now, the first module I would use in every game is the Great Battles. I really like the impact these had on the game. One of the things we found with the original game is that it can start to feel somewhat samey after a number of plays. Now, my favorite part of this module is that it gives you a new way to score points. Along with that, it also gives you a potential reason to use lowered numbered dice in battle just so you can get them over to a Great Battle. We also found that this module encouraged players to complete battles more quickly with players completing battles with lower troop requirements, just so they could get in on a soon-to-end great battle, instead of holding out to do a battle on their own with a bigger troop type. I also kind of like the thematic aspect of different factions contributing to a large battle that's also going on while everyone's doing their own battle plans. I just kind of like the, the metagame of that. This also adds another level of player interaction to a game that can have a bit of a multiplayer solitaire feel at time. This is something where players are directly interacting with each other on the separate cards. Also amusing how you're sending your weakest little slugs over to help everyone else in the battle. That's true. Uh, now, I really enjoyed how it added more thought as how many battles you or others had completed and what the current power was up to could influence your choice of where to add your troops or even when to have a battle or which battle to engage in, trying not to give too many points to your opponents who are sharing the value of those battles with you. Now, due to how much we like th how this one impacts the game, we usually choose to play it with the lower strength side of the point card. We did try both. But having it at the lower point means the great battles are more th worth taking part in than on the other side, and we like that additional impact. I think making them less valuable simply prices them back out of the game. With the lower cost side, they're thought-provoking and impactful, and at the higher price, they become a bit extraneous again. Now, the next module I'll be using in every Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria game is the Shrine of the Titans. The big thing this module adds is randomness mitigation. Having the Shrine in play means the high-value dice remain in play after a battle, 
and so they can be drafted by other players, or if players let them sit there, even by the players who used them in the original way. This can really help out everyone when the board is filled with low-value dice, especially since many players will up the value of these dice just before Battle of Magic and Gems. So you draft a low-cost one, you pump it up, and then it ends up going to the shrine where it's now available for someone else. Interestingly, in one play, we found it could act as a distraction with the player overly focusing on it to their detriment as the big dice aren't always the best choice. Now, I also like the fact this new board section gives players another option. This is another way to spend gold. This is another place to put your um, your warden when moving around the board. We've had some games of Shadow Kingdoms where players have more gold than they know what to do with, and it's nice to have a new spot to spend it. Just don't waste all your cash there or you might regret it later. Now, I particularly liked using these two modules together, the Shrine of Titans along with the Great Battles. There's just something about your troops going on to be used in additional ways after a battle that feels good, even if it may not be you that gets to rehire a troop that's resurrected. Using these two modules together also reduces the randomness of the dice draw during a refresh. And this was something you don't really get the first time you use it, but you start to notice that when you're refilling the board, well, these dice are still out, so they're kind of locked into play and they're still going to be there. So I thought that was pretty interesting change to the probabilities of the dice bag. It definitely made battles feel much more impactful and fulfilling as a player to see your dice do one thing and then go on to continue being of value. Mm -hmm. Though, of course, again, as Mo said, it potentially reduces the dice available in the next die pull. Now, speaking of dice, my next module of choice from Rise of Titans would be the Wraith dice. We thought these purple dice were, were pretty cool. Um, they're, they're great at reducing the randomness of troop colors, which will help players be able to complete battles earlier. Um, when players haven't unlocked things, like every faction has an ability that lets them use their color as a wild card. Well, until then, you could have a board where there's no brown dice to draft. Well, Wraith will fill that spot. I also dig the fact they're low-powered dice, which is great for getting discounts, but don't make a huge difference in battle. So yes, you grab that one Wraith um, to get six gold if it's on that particular shrine, but then it's only a one in battle. I kind of like the balance of that. Though it is possible that that one to three strength might be the amount you need to push to a higher scoring category, because once someone played this game even once, we'll realize it's all about hitting different thresholds. I didn't see their value at first, and I still don't love them, but that's why they're at number three on our list here. I did, by the end of the game, see the benefit of them and grew to appreciate them more, but they would definitely never make a must-have list for me. Yeah, and this is one I would definitely keep out, I think, when introducing the game for new players. I just think it's an extra level of complexity. Now, while I can't pick out a specific aspect of the Wraith dice I don't like, I just, I have to take or leave them. Like, they're a fine addition, but I don't feel like they were missing either, because we played a game on the weekend that didn't use them at all. Yeah, exactly. They're nice, but perhaps some players might really adapt well to them and thrive with their addition. Now, of course, the final module in Rise of Titans for Shadow Kingdoms is my least favorite, and that is the Ancient Spells, which is ironic. If you have read or listened to our Shadow Kingdoms of Lyria, my biggest complaint about the game is its lack of asymmetry, and that's what this expansion was meant to add. But it's just not the right kind of asymmetry. I wanted each of the five factions in the game to feel different, and that's not what these spells do. Instead, they give every player six new ways to break the rules and earn some stuff during the game. It's not tied to the faction they're playing at all. And where this really fell down was the fact those six new ways are only out of a total possible version of eight different spells. Yeah, sadly, this did not achieve what we believe they were trying to achieve with this edition. While the powers were nice and helpful, they just didn't stand out, and the lack of variety, especially in five-player games, mm. was very disappointing. Yeah, every time I've used this module, my hand has consisted of at maximum four different spells, and lots of duplication. Like, one time I could cast the same spell three different ways on three different cards. Everyone else's hand is kind of the same. And there's always an overlap of what spells you have with the other players. I think the biggest problem with this one is only having eight spell types ends up not feeling at all asymmetric. Yeah, this deck needs, for me, a significant expansion for it to achieve its goals. Right now, it's just not worth the time involved in adding them to the game, both in decision time, setup, and teaching. Yeah, I just, I wanted more out of these. I don't feel they really add much to the game, and the fact everyone gets them 
kind of made the effect kind of feel like a wash. Like we've all getting the same benefit. I tend to leave these in the box when playing Shadow Kings of Larry. That said, if someone said, hey, I like the spells, toss them in. Sure, I'll play with them. Again, it becomes a cost benefit analysis and these just fall a little short. Now, overall, I think Rise of Titans is an excellent expansion for Shadow Kings of Larry. Unlike some other module-based expansions, we ended up liking all four of the modules presented here. Now, of those four, there were two we really enjoyed, and we'll be using pretty much every game. The Great Battles and Shrine of Titans, specifically. There's one we may or may not use, which is the Wraith Dice, and one we'll probably keep in the box, which is the Ancient Spells. With this, the impact of those first two modules have on the game, to me, pushes this expansion into that must-have for all Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria players category. Just barely, though, barely. Like, I've been debating it since playing the expansion a couple times. The, the reason I say this is I will still happily play the base game without modules. And yeah, it might feel like I'm missing a bit, but like it, these, this expansion doesn't fix anything. And, and the base game is still a great dice drafting, engine building, worker place game. The expansion doesn't fix it, but it does make it better. And better enough that I think it's worth picking up for any group who enjoys the original. If you've been looking for the player asymmetry we've always wanted this game to get, this isn't going no. to fulfill that hunger. However, I think, and I think we both agree, that it does increase the replayability mm -hmm. of the game, which yes. got a little tired on our table for a while, uh, after a while. Yeah, that game can start to feel samey, and this does help with that significantly. Well, that's it for our review of Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria, Rise of Titans, and an expansion we strongly recommend any Shadow Kingdoms owners to pick up. What's an expansion you think that, sh that everyone that owns the base game should pick up? Tell us about it in the comments below. If you have thoughts on this review or must have expansions in general, I invite you to join the Tabletop Bellhop Discord, which you can find at discord.tabletopbellhop.com. <laughs> 